yeah so I, I think people might you know possibly start hearing me yeah no no i'm here on time you see yeah, all the chat is just talking the absolute worst of me but uh, no no i'm here i am here and are you welcome welcome one and all hello oh there's lots of silence my mic's on i can hear things people can hear things yes <laughs> hello <laughs> hello everyone i hope everyone's well um how are you all doing let's let's go big face hello everyone hello hello i'm currently drinking uh neck oil because it's quite quite pleasant here neck oil thanks beaver town brewery very tasty my little mini pint glass here oh crikey so uh welcome hello look at this so analytics aren't working because we've not had more than five minutes there we go boom we're in uh it's happening it's happening so right without further ado uh because there's a new format ish I've, we've been running the slightly different format where i do the news before actually uh, kicking off the show so let's do that let's do just that uh what the, what youtube just shouted at me for some reason youtube leave me alone so uh today we're talking about whether a fixed link to northern ireland will work uh that's uh this is episode 33 good grief 33 blinking episodes uh in any case let's crack on first however the news uh what is in the news uh oh well uh yeah i've updated my graph and we can see that given that britain's been sort of steadily doing more locky downy things uh even road usage is, is pitching downwards again cycling is pitched downwards very much and rail continues to just teeter on the brink down at around 30 percent as you'd expect uh not great but that is where we are uh so th there's, there's the first update very good um <laughs> ella we're not sponsored by camel cigarettes it's not happening you can't you can't make it happen um about using beard oil on this beard anyway people can hear me that's good uh, oh, the next bit of news. Uh, Elon Musk, everyone's favourite moron, has built uh, an underground car park. Hooray! Uh, in his own words, Elon Musk... Wait a minute, can I do an Elon Musk? I deliberately never listen to him talk. Uh, it's like something something apartheid -y, right? Uh, that's going to be insulting to some people. Uh, in any case, his, his words, We simplified this a lot. It's basically just Teslas in tunnels at this point, which is way more profound than it sounds. No, Elon, it isn't. It's precisely exactly what everyone expected it to be. There's nothing profound about it other than perhaps the profoundness of how utterly febrile uh, a suggestion it was in the first place. In any case, yeah, so he's built an underground car park. It's not actually his tweet that's, that's signified uh, people. Actually, um, Mark Harris and the team at um, TechCrunch did a fantastic... A uh, bit of a dig into the into the applications for fire regulate you know for uh, to the fire regulator essentially, and looking at what the capacity of the system was and it's it's bad folks it's bad, uh, oh gol golly it is bad, so um uh, yeah so absolutely tremendous success uh, there from Elon good 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 work, uh, he's created an underground tunnel to park cars within, uh, so it's basically a taxi rank. That you then park a series of model model whichever teslas within uh, and then people will get stuck in it and probably burn to death if there's a fire uh, it's just dismal from top to bottom but what's funnier is the fact that actually the main fire regulation is that within the current pr proposals they can't have more than one vehicle between um, station stops so even though the station capacity is about 800 passengers uh, an hour uh, the actual system capacity is substantially less um in any case uh Oh, what's funny about this? So the the, the reason I, the main reason I brought this up, uh, well, there are two reasons. The first is because I've just fin just submitted a piece to Rail Magazine talking about the Cambridge Autonomous Metro, which is neither autonomous nor a metro, and this diagram is contained within one of the early reports about the Cambridge Autonomous Metro. Uh, and uh, so, so for those who can't see this, i.e., everyone who's with us on the old. Uh, the old chat, the, the old um, podcasteroo. Uh, so this says steps to mass transit cost reduction, and there there are six figures here, figures A through F, uh, and what you've got here is um, firstly an S stock tube train with a pantograph, which is amusing already. In any case, basically a metro system, electrified metro system. So the first thing they do for figure A, they've got pan, you know, they've got pan track, proper train, 
figure B, uh, they have uh, got rid of the overhead power. Uh, so, you know, at that point, it's basically underground. But I'm assuming what they mean is get rid of the external power supply. The next thing they've done is get rid of the track. So uh, for figure C, the train is just merely floating. Figure D, they've swapped the, 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 the wheels, the steel wheels with tires. Uh, figure E, they've changed it into what resembles a bus. And in figure F, they've reduced the cross section of the tunnel. Now, this is funny on a number of uh, levels. Firstly, the idea that this saves costs is funny because um, it doesn't. Uh, infrastructure, the reason that you have heavy infrastructure costs is because this system then becomes very, very efficient to move a lot of people. Um, if you're going to move the same number of people is in a, with our figure A system here as the figure F system, um, you're going to be blowing up a lot of tires. You're going to need a lot of buses. You're going to have a system that is absolutely insane from an operational cost perspective. Um, and actually, the expensive bit of a, building a mass transit system isn't the tunnel, folks. Anyway, all of this can be found in... Um, oh, yeah, and so system capacity, yada, yada. All of this can be... Um, can be seen in uh, well, there's your problem latest episode, uh, which is uh, which is really good fun. I would heartily recommend you go and watch it. Um, yes, go and enjoy that. Uh, yes. So if I just um, do do, do uh, let me just press this button here. So uh, oh, uh, so that's fun. Musk uh, is it continues to be a full. Uh, the next bit of news is that the driverless tube is a no-go. This is interesting, uh, particularly this slide, which hopefully not many people have seen because I don't think it's in particularly wide circulation. Um, so what we have here are the conclusions from a, from a, a thing that has been leaked via Aslev. So, um, thanks, Aslev. Good work. Because it's actually relevant, and it's actually in everyone's favour, really, that this is understood because one of the, one, one of the supposed... Uh, ways that the government is going to fund TfL is by convincing them to get rid of all their uh, drivers out of their trains and, and make all their trains driverless. Now, if there was a sensible reason behind that, maybe it's something that, that, that would be law, that, that would be, you know, fair enough. But actually, uh, the uh, TfL have done some decent studies into this, and they've basically concluded that there is no value in doing so. The um, So what I've got here is an extract from the slides. I've redacted a couple of bits. I think I might well do a rail natter on this because it's very interesting. Um, it'd be interesting to flick through because it has wider implications for other things as well. Basically, the, the London Underground Network wide appraisal summary highlights that there is no financial case for driverless operation in view of the very high upfront capital cost of infrastructure enabling works and train system conversions. Overall network wide, um, uh, basically autonomous conversion represents poor value for money. Its implementation network wide will present a considerable affordability challenge, which will further exacerbate TfL's current financial and longer term funding position. So there you go. Driverless tube trains, pointless. So um, you you um, you heard it here first. So, uh, oh, that's right. Yeah. So uh, Black Peach Peach is asking me to promote um, "Do Not Eat" old uh, episode on Loop as well, which is excellent. Yes. Um, do uh, do go and watch that. That was the first I heard of. Uh, do Not Eat was watching that. Someone else had linked it to me, or I stumbled upon it. I can't quite remember. It's excellent. Go and watch it. It's fantastic fun. Uh, it's worth watching that and the and the latest uh, Well, There's Your Problem podcast episode. It's just, it, it, it's good fun. And also, it's just basically the only thing you can do with Elon Musk's stuff is laugh at it because it's bonkers. So, uh, what else? Oh, yeah, Kintor Station exists once more. Hooray! Um, my not quite local... So, Inveruri was my local station when I was growing up as a kid. And um, Kintor never had... Uh, you know, it had a station footprint, but the, the, the station had got uh, kiboshed by... Uh, uh, you know, during the 1960s to avoid my own klaxon there. In any case, um, so there is Kintor. I, I don't know why they've put the Gallic on there because uh, that wasn't really a thing on the East Coast, but I kind of, you know, it's a, uh, it makes sense on the West Coast of Scotland, but it's not like Wales where everyone speaks Welsh. Gallic isn't the language of, of sizable parts of, like Montrose having Gallic name is a bit weird. In any case, uh, that's, you know, whatever. Uh, but there is it's looking nice. That's nice enough, isn't it? It's a station, you know. They've they've gone for this sort of mod, this sort of um, harp unit platform design, which I'm slightly skeptical of. But anyway, and it's you know it's not a pretty station, but it's functional. It does exactly what it needs to do. It's accessible, uh, and uh, yeah, it's good. It's good news. And and basically, it it's sort of the sizable progress towards the line from Aberdeen to Inverurie being almost like a 
suburban line really it's it's good you know and um you know potential for even more stations to open if they can uh basically it's double track now which is good it never was when i was a kid in any case uh you're a star level 009 you've got carried away with mini metro yeah well we, we all of us do it's a fun game at some point i'll stream it what a game in any case um yeah uh, irish craft beer show it doesn't though because kintor didn't start off being gallic it's not a derived it's not derived from gallic that 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 gallic there is actually a conversion from the uh the original uh so it's, it's kintor is a brythonic root rather than a <clears throat> rather than a gallic root in any case we can uh, we can argue toponymy at some point instead we're going to look at this picture of the sea here we are a picture of the sea so um uh, Scottish Parliament was cross party. Yes, it was a cross party decision. Yes, it's true. Um, uh, yes, Jen on the move. You're right. It's still not providing much shelter from the elements uh, as a station. It is a little bit exposed. There's a bus shelter at one end, but it's nothing glamorous. I really, I have to say, I've been very disappointed by the new stations we've seen over the last sort of few years. I was, I was hoping for more vision, and we've seen the shoe boxes and worse. Oh yeah, I was going to put Reading West in, wasn't I? Ah. Oh, yeah. Google Reading West Station. It looks exactly as bad as you'd fear it would. In any case, the sea. We're going to talk about the sea and, and what to do about it, specifically the Irish Sea. That's what this episode is all about. And what we're also about to find out is whether I've got the audio working on the intro music because we're about to kick off tonight's Rail Natter. <laughs> City 225. Me forgetting that when you click out of PowerPoint, it pauses video. But other than that, I think that worked. The music is working. Hooray! Um, excellent. Uh, <laughs> so this here is a picture of uh, the majority of, of the British Isles, plus the island of Ireland. So the archipelago, I don't know, what, what can we call it? The West European Mid-Atlantic Archipelago? I don't know. What, I don't know what a non-Britain name for, for this lot is. But you've got, um, well, you have uh, the island of Great Britain, which is the really big one. And then you've got the, uh, the island of Ireland, which is called Ireland. So you've got Great Britain and you've got Ireland next to each other there. Lovely. And there's a load of other little bits and pieces here and there, like, I don't know, Jura. They make good whiskey. Uh, the Isle of Man. Uh, they, 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 they enjoy throwing motorbikes at, inside, into pubs. What else? Uh, you know, Lundy. They do puffins. Uh, Storn away, they do. Uh, what do they do? Black pudding, cheese. I don't know. Probably lots of little islands, but the two ones we're going to talk about are Great Britain, uh, Ireland, and also we are going to mention the Isle of Man a couple of times. So, uh, yes, I'm very glad. Oh, islands of the North Atlantic. Thanks, Irish Craft Beer Show. Irish Craft Beer Show is going to be keeping me right because I'm going to ruin. Um, I'm going to. I'm going to get cancelled today probably, but uh, yeah, but hopefully not. Irish Craft Beer Show keep me right. You're right. They, they are. The, we're we're going to say it's uh, these islands. That'll do. So there is a. So there's a weird quirk that for some reason, uh, because colonialism and also other politics, there's another bit. The bit of Ireland that for some reason, Great Britain owns and has dominion over, Northern Ireland. So uh, there are two countries that are intact within this. Actually, there's three because Denmark is entirely in this photo. But if we ignore Denmark, there are two countries in front of us here. One of them is. Uh, the Republic of Ireland, and the other is uh, the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, uh, for better or worse. So, <laughs> uh, everyone's gonna, so everyone's gonna get angry and cancel me. But basically, uh, yes, uh, generally considered a terrible idea. But you know, that's fine. The island of Ireland, the island of Ireland, is not connected by. There's, there's no physical connection. There's this, there's this, there's, 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 there's a sea here. A sea. It's called the Irish Sea, and it, and that's what makes Ireland and Great Britain two islands. In any case, as you can tell, that's a that's really insightful thoughts on on what's going on there. So I had to zoom in a bit. It's actually, very faded. You can see some of the railway lines here. If you, you so you got capital of the Republic of Ireland, Dublin there. You got Belfast up here. Uh, what else you got? You got sort of Glasgow up there, and there's there's uh, Teesside, uh, there's Brum, and there's there's that London they have. 
obviously the most important place down here with its wonderful kink. There's there's York, lovely. Um, so Denmark of Miss and Bornholm. Ah, yeah, very good point. Actually, I didn't know that. I don't know which island Bornholm is, but that's fine. <laughs> Graham Harris of demographics will ensure that Northern Ireland won't be part of the UK in the future. Yeah, I think there's a lot of thumbs up there. This is, let's face it, there's a lot of leftists here. And if nothing else, it just feels silly for an island to not be uh, unified as one. I don't know. That's, uh, let's, let's not go there. Well, we, we are going to go there. So what's the problem? What's the issue here? Um, well, firstly, yeah, this, the Irish Sea is quite a mean sea. Uh, and it's, so, yeah, for example, here is uh, an image of the... Uh, the Princess Victoria, I believe, the MV Princess Victoria, which got sunk in 1953 as part of the massive storms that were happening in 1953, uh, absolutely tragically sunk and killed, uh, resulting in the lo loss of life of lots of people. Um, it's a very harsh bit of sea, and as a result, it's quite tricky to do things with it, if, like build bridges. Uh, it's also quite wide. So that's one of the challenges, is that there's a sea there, uh, and it's quite a mean one. So there's a splashy problem. Um, oh yeah Wacom sorry I, I know I need to buy a Wacom yes 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 red pen on green is an issue oh do you don't you just you wait until the the color clashes that are going to be going on tonight I can only apologize um so there are other challenges uh one of them is um is the road problem so here's, here's a nice road and, and what happens when you build roads is people drive on them and then they keep driving on them until they get full uh which is uh, not a very good idea so um, it's not like the old and happy days where you know here's the here's the seven the original seven bridge being built the seven uh, well the original road uh, crossing you can see the lovely suspension bridge being built there um, and the ferry in the foreground with a fantastic little mini metro at the front there Ooh, lovely um, you know back in the middle of the 20th century there weren't that many cars and it wasn't too much of a hassle to you know when you built things and it was like oh yeah build a road that's fine it's not going to result in a massive domination of, of you know a massive change except that it did and it, it ruined the country so uh, let's exclude road so much as you can build major sea crossings with roads and railways this is the Orson Bridge I believe you can see here is uh, a well, I'll tell you what let me get I'm doing it I'm getting the orange one out this is even more fady. So here you've got the, the road. And actually, you can see here the railway comes through, goes out, and then goes in underneath there. And actually, it's a double deck uh, bridge. So you've got rail underneath, road above. Lovely stuff. Um, so, uh, what's the other Matt Reed, is the distance between Liverpool and Northern Ireland bigger than the distance uh, the channel is? We're going to get to that, Matt. We are going to get to that. Um, so, as part of the, so the road problem is for this discussion this lovely rail natter oh, I'll tell you what I need to do I'm missing out on this thing here I'm in the corner again hello everyone I forgot to put myself in the corner I'm back I'm back uh, yes yeah, Star Trek predicted 2023 for the reunification of Ireland uh, I'm, I'm with them on that so there's another issue can anyone see what this picture shows or rather what it well it is showing something there's something that, that to my eye given that I'm used to seeing this looking at this pic you know the, this sort of layout quite a lot um it looks a bit weird in my eyes uh can anyone else tell me what why that is while you do that i'm gonna pour a little bit of beer get in the chat tell me what the issue is go 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 hi richard uh always a pleasure to see everyone in the chat by the way always a pleasure uh people are going is that washed out ballast no you're, you're you're missing the you're missing there we go it's happened simon fish has picked it up ella has also picked it up uh it's david shepherd thinks it's a ready break effect no yeah they have i mean smooshed quite a lot of ballast down here but no you're, you're picking it up the tracks are a bit wide it's irish gauge broad gauge there is no electrification that's very true matt and pete you, you are right no electricity so yes this is a broad gauge railway because on the island of ireland when the gauge commission what was it 46 that the gauge commission um decided on what track gauge was going to exist the distance between the two rails they yeah so this this is the this is an issue it's the gauge problem because in Great Britain we have uh, four for eight and a half inches fourteen thirty five millimeters between the the gauge faces of the rails uh, on the island of Ireland uh, that figure is sixteen hundred millimeters uh, five foot three inches I think there we go um, so that's an issue because you have uh, a gauge incompatibility or is it an issue because 
Well, a, a variety of things. Firstly, let's talk very, very quickly about how, how are we doing? What time is it? 20 minutes in. Ah, that's fine. We're doing all right. Um, scrunch together. We do use the scrunch together rails. You're right, Irish Craft Beer Show. Uh, it's it's true. Um, <laughs> so, um, actually, 1600 millimeter gauge is a better gauge than 1435 millimeters. Brunel was right out with his silly broad gauge, way too wide. 1600 millimeters is a really nice optimization between infrastructure costs uh, and between uh, stability at speeds. Uh, there are a couple of studies. Felix Schmidt pointed me to a study, and I couldn't think, I couldn't find the thing. Anyway, uh, there are, there are, there are a variety of uh, quantifications of this from a purely technical perspective. However, as was discovered in fairly early on in the 1800s, actually, you mustn't let the perfect be the enemy of the good when it comes to track gauge, and it's far more important to have an interoperable system, to have a system that allows you to run trains between different railways than it is to have the perfect engineering solution with a gauge perspective. So actually, this isn't an issue. Despite the fact that we have you know trains that can tra change, uh, their, their, the, the axles can actually change to work with different uh, track gauges, so this is a picture, where is this one? I think this is Spain, uh, where there's the, the gauge transfer between the Spanish gauge, the kind of Iberian Peninsula gauge, and uh, you know EU 1435 standard gauge. This is a lot of very expensive, heavy kit, and it looks like a nightmare, and makes all your trains heavy and a pig. Actually, the far better way to, to do, the, the far better solution is to just build everything that's on the other side of this bridge and or tunnel to 1435 millimeter gauge, and um essentially do it the way the spanish have where the the high speed network the interoperable network is at 1435 mil and all the new infrastructure you build is to that gauge and you either have a double gauge track where you want to run trains on the existing network or you have parallel corridors or you overall or you slowly convert but the reality is that our that, that uh ireland as a whole but certainly the republic are looking at a high speed railway network anyway which would be built to 1435 gauge they i i would I would doubt that they would build a new railway to, to, to Irish gauge. I would expect it to be to EU gauge because, if nothing else, it means they can buy trains easily. So, you know, there, there, there are sensible reasons to buying a, a railway that, or to, to building a railway with a standard track gauge. So, um, so we don't have to worry about gauge changes because we're going to be building this bridge and the connecting railway on the other side, uh, in Ireland, that is, to, to standard track gauge. So, so problem solved. Oh, yes. Explosions. Um, here we go. Just having a quick sip of delicious, tasty beer there. Uh, yes, uh, the explodey problem. There are there there be much uh, much in the way of dumped ordnance down here. Let's get the old um. Let's let's go dark blue, shall we? In fact, let's go purple. Let's get purple up. So um, you can see here this this sort of uh, this sort of dashed box uh, is is it means bad things because here it says dumping ground brackets explosives. This is an old map I've just put up. Um, and you can see the railway coming in here, Kakoan, uh, uh, Stranraer, and then over to Port Patrick. And then you can see it on the other side as well here. There's Larn uh, on the other side. So so we've got one coast here, and we've got the other coast uh, here. The funny little boot shape of... Or what What is the shape of Stranraer? It's like a hammerhead shark, isn't it? Of uh, The shape of, uh, of the rings. Yeah. So um, a large part of the trench through here, this is the, um, the Beaufort... Uh, dyke trench i believe correct me if i'm wrong on that one mariners on here the royal navy this isn't even this is this is in first world war times not even second world war times first world war times they just dumped a large volume of explodey stuff into this trench so they didn't have to worry about it anymore apparently there's nuclear waste down there too there is so much dumped down in there uh that it's um that's a bit of an issue however not necessarily an insurmountable one because uh, frankly, we ought to do something about it anyway because it's a colossal liability waiting to happen. Um, Matt Reed asked, could they just blow it all up? I don't know how you'd get away with risk assessing that uh, from <laughs> because you'd have to be close enough to you'd have to get something down there to blow it up, and you'd have no idea what you were what damage you're causing, what you were going to blow up uh, on the surface. I suppose you know there are ways and means. It would require some sort of coordination. Uh, yes, I, I just. Don't think blowing it up, given that there's all sorts of nasties and toxic nuclear waste down there, is a very good idea. I think probably very gently dredging it, or I don't know, it's going to be a horrible engineer. Basically, you need to get the nuclear engineers on it because they're good at doing stuff that involves potential for explodey stuff or, or you know, waste stuff. But it needs sorting out in any case. Um, 
but you can also just dodge it entirely you know if you're going to build something around it you can just sort of dodge that with your with your tunnel they yeah, do that which is in all likelihood what would happen if they chose this route so okay explodey stuff is bad but that's it's not insurmountable right the next problem the construction problem there's a nice picture i think it's the orison bridge again getting constructed that's quite a nice picture isn't it um yeah there we are see in sit cantilevering out you can see the scale of the of the structure given that it's got heavy rail underneath it you can see the size of some of the girder work on there it's quite quite something actually wowza look at that Oof. some nice girders there lovely nice uh nice truss truss section going on um yeah, the, uh, the ecological damage, uh, John Christoph points out rightly, and uh, he's someone to pay attention to, that the real problem is basically the ecological damage to the seabed. The seabed's a hugely valuable habitat, and dredging it, blowing it up, these are all really tricky things. Um, so, I talk about the construction problem, as in it's difficult to build long sea bridges, but we it's not again, it's not an insurmountable challenge. This is the Orison Bridge, you can see these chunky girders again, these chunky boys here. Uh, oh, look at that no gusset plates you'll notice uh, do not eat Alice Liam if you're watching which you won't be because you're busy but this there's lack of gusset plates here look at that if you get rid of the gusset plates surely that fixes everything right it's a fantastically elegant bit of bridge this absolutely stunning also you get to film noir dramas on either end of it so it's just a triple win right um, Owen O'Neill says whole three days a year with weather that nice yeah it's um, yeah yeah <laughs> So let's look at four, I think, one, two, three, yeah, four major uh, structures. First of all, we're going to start with the biggest, which is uh, the world's biggest bridge, the longest bridge. And it's a high-speed bridge in China, as you might expect. It's the Danyang to Kunshan Grand Bridge, which is 165 kilometers. It's the world's longest bridge. So there we go. Uh, having a moment. Always having a moment. Yes, Jen, I'm always having a moment when it comes to nice concrete-looking structures. Um, number two. Number two is, wait, Canadian rail fan, nuclear engineer. Hello. Yes, uh, Candane rail fan is pointing out that there'd be a lot of nuclear waste needing to be lifted very carefully. The Royal Navy would need to use depth charges, but it would cause a 5.5 earthquake. So that's a that's a no then, basically, isn't it? Um, people. Are, so I'm doing exactly the thing that I've seen people commenting on various Discord servers about that, that I'm rubbish at on this, which is that I dash around like I've got ADD. It's probably because I do, actually. Um but that's kind of the format. It's chaos, and people manage to th th stick it through thick and thin. 120 of you are watching just now and sticking it through my bouncing around like chaos. Um, all the while I'm doing this chat, doing this chatting, um, is what's this that people can see? Uh, well, it's the Gotthard Base Tunnel. Uh, yes, that's right. 57 kilometers worth of it. See, it's nice. It's nice. You can see all sorts of stuff going on here. The, the tunnel, the tunnel portal is here. Uh, and you can see kind of the old rail route going in, doing things there, and kind of yeah, it's a it's a very nice aerial photo actually. It looks very pleasantly alpine, doesn't it? Everything, all the greens and blues are quite extreme. Uh, anyway, that's the the Gotthard Base Tunnel, fifty seven kilometers worth of it. Uh, so that's pretty sizable, you know. It's a huge tunnel. It's the world's longest tunnel. Um, what's the next thing? Ah, this is a fairly dicky photo of what is the world's longest uh, sea crossing, which is the Hong Kong to Zuhai to Macau Bridge, which is 55 kilometers. So 55 kilometers, 57 kilometers, you're getting an idea of the order of magnitude of some of these large engineering projects, these massive mega projects to get across or through things. Um, and lastly, because it is a record breaker still, uh, the world's longest underwater tunnel is the Channel Tunnel. Um, 50 kilometers in length, you can see these, um, these chaps here. Here's Owen Jones, a uh, popular Guardian journalist here uh, in his first job. Uh, as a uh, as a person in a bib digging mud, uh, there he is, looking pretty cheerful. Uh, who else have we got here? Uh, well, we've got Rob Delaney down there. Uh, who's who's this? I'm I'm not sure who we got. We've got Hugh Dennis up there. Well, maybe that's Sean. Anyway, yeah. And uh, who else have we got? We've got. Oh, I can't quite tell who these people are. In any case, you can see all all the usual suspects. Uh, no, Japan's is a longer undersea tunnel, but it doesn't have a longer underwater section, Richard. So, uh, good query, but um, uh, not quite. That's the, it's the the Honshu Tunnel is a longer tunnel, but it doesn't have as long a section that's underwater. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a p p finickiness that I'm going to hold on to. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, they are of relatively, they are of pretty shallow pastures. Yes, uh, Al Stora, you're right. Um, uh, Hugh Dennis, the comedian. Yes, uh, that's right. You can see them all there. Um, the Channel Tunnel was the first big bit of engineering I was obsessed with as a kid. Yeah, I, I, when I was growing up, it was something that had recently opened. And I was hugely excited, but it felt very distant for me. I was up in the far north of Scotland, and it was always, um, I was amazed whenever I heard about it. And, and just, but unfortunately, the time, this, most of the time it was in the news was because of uh, the ever increasingly large fences they were building around it. Um, rather than the fantastic engineering. If you want to read about the Channel Tunnel, go into Medium and find my um, Medium piece on it, that, uh, my piece that I put in Rail, um, where I ramble on about it, include lots of nice stats. And, and at some point, there'll be a Channel Tunnel episode, and we'll grab one of the Channel Tunnel engineers, um, or I'll just do a, 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 I'll just do it as a, as a solo one, and then you know, that'll be fine. In any case, the Channel Tunnel, it's big, 50 kilometres. And yeah, there are other, uh, the, the, the Japanese, uh, the, the Honshu Tunnel is, is of a similar order of magnitude, a little longer, but less under, under the water itself. Um, so the next question is, what's the point? Why do we need to have a tunnel uh, or a bridge, you know, a fixed link between uh, Northern Ireland and uh, the rest of the UK? Why is that a good idea? Well, good grief, there are all sorts of reasons why. A lot of them are political. Whenever Boris mentions it, it's because he's just obsessed with big ticket infrastructure items because he thinks they're a big win. Uh, somehow it's because he's a klutz um, and uh, yes but I, from my perspective there are lots of proper sensible reasons why it's not a bad idea to have a fixed link uh, one of them is the fact that it's uh, the, the connection between London to Dublin actually is uh, Europe's busiest air route uh, nearly 5 million annual passengers travel from London across to Dublin um, in 2016 okay yes that's diminished substantially this year for you know Rona reasons but um, actually, from my perspective, if you think about the fact that London to Edinburgh has about 3.4 million annual passengers, that's a huge number of people flying on a pretty short trip. And it's a, sh a short enough trip that I think that we ought to consider investing in an alternative. So that alone is one reason. But there's a huge amount of freight that goes across the, the, um, the Irish Sea. There is a huge... Uh, amount of you know there's there's a there's a value in having a the connection between ireland and scotland should should ireland uh, reunify and scotland become independent there's a value in although boris wouldn't wouldn't uh, enjoy this one there's a value in there being a connection between those two to to form almost like a sort of a a, a sort of a a little sort of uh celtic trading block there um all we need then is for the welsh to to do something and uh you know to to break free maybe sort of uh, toss the anchor across the irish sea in any case, uh, there are lots of sensible reasons for, for doing it, actually. And yes, it's it's big and stupid and a ridiculous, massive engineering project. And there's, there are better ways to spend resources. I don't care about the money, but in terms of spending engineering resource, there are better ways to spend it, probably. But there, there, there are reasonably sensible reasons for having, a, having this fixed link. Um, there's a lot of discussion about nuclear waste going on. Um, yes. Uh, have I been demonetized? Ella, why have I been demonetized? What have I done? Uh, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In any case, uh, it's because I talked about reunification, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the Celtic uh, Celtic trading block. I'm I'm all for it. In any case, let's go to the next thing. So yeah, let's. This, this is this is a map. Like, well, let's go back to the aerial again. And this is a large island, and this is a large island, and they don't join up with each other. And it might not be a bad idea for them to do that. Which kind of then begs the next question, which is, what are the options for doing this? We're, 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 we're half an hour through, um, and I might have teased you by say, suggesting this was going to be a deep technical dive into what the f technical engineering feasibility is. This ain't going to be what that is. Not because I don't think it's interesting. No, actually, that's precisely why. It's because it isn't that the, the engineering challenges, the reality is that engineers can deliver whatever whatever you need them to. They can over, particularly when it comes to civil engineering, there are, well, there's a will, there's a way. They, the fact that there's a huge trench full of explosive ordnance isn't a isn't a you know you can solve that problem. It just requires time, uh, thought, and and energy and and uh, and lots and lots of people just uh, thinking about it. Um, lots of people asking about submerged floating tunnels. That works where you've got shallow water, but where you've got deep water, I think it's a much more challenging uh, from an engineering perspective. That's a bit more shall we say interesting. Uh, and I don't know what the geology, geological conditions are, but there are probably quite a few geological fault lines along the Irish Sea that um, perhaps makes that type of proposal a bit more challenging. Uh, lots of So there are lots and lots and lots of thoughts going on here. Um, 
Yes. So one of the key, yeah, it's a very good point that that uh, Richard Smith has brought up, which is that all the populist stuff on the the on Ireland is all on the on the east coast here. All well, let me just let me just do this. Let me get rid of this. All the populist stuff is here on the east coast of Ireland, and generally the major population centres are a bit further inland but i don't know that that's not necessarily true because you've got uh you know merseyside here you've got uh you've got glasgow which is actually you know huge there, there are there are sensible enough reasons to, to to make that connection particularly if you consider you know for example if you think about north wales which is actually kind of quite a large metropolitan area that the a55 unfortunately is a very good connector and the railway along there could be has the potential to be improved greatly electrifying it is a, is a very good start actually there are some major urban areas that you could consider connecting up um i i don't think it's a crazy idea to do it actually um the the people who suggest it's a good idea publicly you know in public particularly the politicians are doing it for ego and vanity purposes but that doesn't necessarily make it a completely stupid idea so everyone's asking me about dimension questions um Ah, John Christoph. Not actually that many faults to worry about. The tectonic boundaries that exist are passive margins and so broadly inactive. Uh, I added broadly in there. I don't know why, John. I was sub-editing you for no reason. Um, uh, Richard, you are right. It's not quite Copenhagen, you know, Greater Copenhagen, Malmo and Scat. You're, you're right. It's not quite that level. But uh, that's still not necessarily a, a reason not to do it. Um, engineering, particularly if we have uh, as deep a recession as we might be following COVID, Colossal engineering projects, in addition to HS2, by the way, um, is not necessarily a bad way to um, to be spending money that is basically free at this point. So, um, yeah, there's my thoughts. Let's have a look at the options. So we've zoomed in a bit more again. Uh, let's let's just shade in Northern Ireland to make um, you know, for for to to try and uncancel me. Uh, and let's have a look at the. So, so I think I've listed off how many five or six options. I think so. I'm including options that go straight over to the Republic that don't go directly to Northern Ireland because I think it's worth considering those. They're sensible options to consider. Uh, yeah, the, the Southeast Manic is, is saying it's surely good for net zero carbon emissions. Yeah, so obviously a major project like this has a, has a, has a substantial carbon footprint. But if you consider that HS2's overall carbon footprint is less than a month's worth of road transport in the UK, uh, I don't know what the relation is to fl probably similar to, you know, it's probably like a week of flying. Um, Actually, this project would probably you know, could have a carbon footprint of double that, uh, given that there's a lot of concrete involved, maybe triple that. Even that is still only a few months worth of, of transport carbon uh, of greenhouse gas emissions. So from a carbon emissions perspective, the project would offset itself if you, particularly if there wasn't a road connection and you're driving a rail connection, you'd be driving, you have the potential to drive a huge amount of modal shift. More importantly, you have the, the, the policy space to start, regulating some of those london to dublin flights out of existence for me that's a win um so that for me is a major benefit so right the routes uh this is going to annoy everyone because it's red on green but don't worry i'm going to expand on it later so the first red patch here uh, i'm going to name all these the first one is the kintyre route so that is connecting um through uh, so the top of so it's so a way away from belfast uh, kind of the top of northern ireland across to the mull of kintyre which is the, the long dingle donger that hangs off sort of next to Butte. Uh, and in my eyes, ra so there's a couple of options there we're going to get expand on. But actually, I think you probably need to then, you'd need to, to island hop via Butte uh, to get over to um, to the mainland and then over to Glasgow. The next option is the Galloway route. So that's going from Stranraer, uh, Port Patrick, across to Larne, um, closer to Belfast. Uh, so there you can see I've, I've shown it nicely in yellow there. Uh, that's probably the, the, the sort of, it's not the shortest connection, it's not the shortest sea connection, it's the one that bulldozes through the explosives, so it's a, it's a potentially trickier one. Uh, the next option is one that doesn't get, it doesn't come up that often, but it's one that I've considered and, and has had a couple of sensible engineering mentions, which is the Isle of Man route. So that's actually going across from Cumbria. Nice connection on the Isle of Man, so all the TT watchers can go over there and, and um, cheer on the, the, the kind of the pub demolition motorcycles. And then going across to south of Belfast, quite a bit south of Belfast. My geography knowledge of the island of Ireland is hopeless, by the way, so I cannot claim to start stating uh, the townships where, that, uh, that this is uh, accessing. Uh, to my great shame, I've, I've only been over a couple of times, actually. Uh, yeah, that needs to be resolved at some point post-Rona. In any case, that's up. options one, two, and three there. Kintyre, Galloway, and the Isle of Man. So there are two further options, I think, actually, not three. Two further options. The next one is the Irish Mail Route. So that's connecting Anglesey across to Dublin. 
Um, uh, so following the former route of the Irish Mail, uh, sort of fast ships, uh, the the sort of uh, rail ferries that would have, or the mail packet ferries that would have gone from across from Hollyhead actually uh, over to to Dublin. So the the, the mainline railway connecting across there, uh, you know, lots of trains that used to be the fast train from London up to Hollyhead to make that connection. No reason that that can't become more of a thing again, you know. Um, and then the last is the Tusca route. Uh, might not be pronouncing that correctly. Um, and that's a connection from South Wales, so from like Fishguard or, or, or kind of broadly the, the, the uh, sort of the, the, the Pembrokeshire coast across to... Now, right, where's Irish Craft Beer Show? Uh, where are you? Right. Is that, is, that county, is that County Cork on that side? Where, which bit of... Which particular bit of the Republic is that connecting up to? It, uh, it's... Uh, is it Cove? Is, uh, in any case, uh, Irish Craft Beer Show is going to correct me. Um, so uh, those are the five options we're looking at. Uh, there might well be iterations of these, but uh, and indeed uh, we're going to explore some of them, I think, in this. But those are the five broad route corridors that you'd expect. Wexford, everyone's saying Wexford. Water, Wexford, Wexford. Detour, thank you, thank you, thank you, Wexford. Everyone's sorting me out right out. Uh, Rosslare, County Wexford. God, I'm bad at. Uh, I'm just just bad at uh, at, at, at uh, Irish geography. I can only apologise, everyone. It's not good enough, really, is it? Could have done my research, right, before doing a show about it. Yeah, unbelievable. It's fine. Railing that as a pub chat among friends. So it's fine. Ross Lair, County, uh, County Wexford. They're on the west. Everyone's laughing at me. Cork and Cove are on the west. Yeah, yeah, they are. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jen, you and me both, right? You and me both. Tusca route would be fastest for trains from, from Ireland to France and beyond. Yeah, that's true. Uh, John Beach. Ah, uh, John. Nice to say, talk about gauge changing and and say and uh, yes, okay. Well, as it, yeah, it's true. You do have some expertise on that one, John. I'll I'll give you that. However, uh, I don't think it undermines the fact that um, we yeah, I do need to get our iron railway expert on. I don't think it undermines the fact that uh, I think if you're going to be building new infrastructure on the island, high speed infrastructure, it'd be to fourteen thirty five gauge anyway. Uh, John, I need to get you on for a rail natter then. You can tell us all about gauge changing trains. I'd be keen for it. Right, anyway, next. Uh, yes, there definitely needs to be some Ireland, Ireland themed uh, and Northern Ireland themed rail natters. Absolutely. And if you've got people who want to, who get suggesting, basically, um, get, get, get suggesting, get on the Discord and start suggesting guests who you want to join me and to talk about bits of railway, because I'd be well up for that. Right, let's start looking at the routes. <clears throat> it's already quarter two. Good grief. This this is how it always goes, isn't it? So the Kintyre route. So this is red on green, just to really cheer Ella up. So so what I've got here is I've so the, I've put in the sea tunnel, the, the, the sort of main connection here. Now, the trouble with the Mull of Kintyre is that it's absolutely miles from everything. And so the nearest railway connection is up in pretty much Oban. In fact, literally Oban. Uh, so that, that's which is up here. This is Oban here. There's Oban. Uh, and clearly it's miles away. Um, so, you know, you could go across and connect up at, you know, Ard Louis or something. Here we are. Because I haven't talked for the, to the, to the to cows, come, cows come home about uh, railways, particularly in Scotland. Uh, you could do that. But all of that is miles away from anywhere useful. And it's just such a huge dog leg. So my instinct, if you're going to choose this route, is actually you'd end up constructing a bridge uh, or tunnel connecting uh, Butte across. So, so essentially you're going to go, you're going to build a bit of railway that goes through and through. And so if I get rid of all this ink, you'll see that my proposal is essentially a connection from Belfast up to um, the connection, the direct connection across the sea to the Mullock Entire, uh, and then up to Glasgow and connecting to Glasgow Central probably, uh, and then connect using some of the junctions south of Glasgow Central to sort of connect into the rest of the network for, for freight, because I, I think this would be a mixed tunnel. It couldn't be passenger only. It would make no sense. You'd treat it a bit like the Channel Tunnel where you'd have a mixture of fast services and freight services. Uh, and and indeed, uh, motor rail I think would be a sensible thing to do. So let's get into distances. So that's ninety kilometers. So so these I've done straight lines in the dotty bits, but actually the the, the kilometerages you see are are actually lines. Um, I've actually kind of mapped on a rough idea of what a line might look like to get an idea of distances. So you can see some some distances there. So that the longest connect. So the connection across the sea there is a twenty kilometer uh, connection, whether it's tunnel or bridge. I'm entirely agnostic. You'd probably end up with a mixture of the two, to be honest. Um, and that's true for all of them. So the total sea crossing length is 41 kilometers. That includes the bits across up in um, 
uh, up uh, to uh, on and off Butte, at 91 kilometres uh, on the island of Ireland, and 106 kilometres of infrastructure on the the British side, on the on the on the mainland, the British mainland. So so there are your distances. So uh, people are wondering about the fast lane sub base. Ah, not if you bury it. If you bury, it, if you have a partial bridge tunnel, you're, you're going to be grand. Be fine. People can dro people can drop iron brew cans up the submarines as they pass. It'd be great. Um, so that's the Kintai route. Next, the Galloway route. This is the one that's going to involve much of the nuclear wastes. Uh, but I, contrary to some of the chat, I don't see this as being an impossible uh, being an impossible problem. It's fine. So here's the the sea tunnel. So just a single crossing of the sea between uh, Port Patrick and Larne. And and then some form of, of, of sort of uh, connection either side. So you've got a 35 kilometer sea crossing with 31 kilometers uh, in uh, in Northern Ireland and 140 kilometers connecting up to. And in my eyes, you'd, you'd basically join up to the West Coast Main Line uh, north of Carlisle. Uh, so you'd find one of the straits, build a grid separated junction then, and then somehow weave a high speed line uh, through Dumfries and Galloway to this line. I mean, that'd be fun. I'd love the job to do that at the... Uh, some interesting, uh, some interesting high-speed rail alignment there. Anyway, that's uh, that's what you do. So, thirty-five kilometers of sea crossing, and at what's that, one hundred and seventy-one kilometers of, of 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 rail of extra railway to build. So, not much of a you know a fairly short connection on the Irish side. What's the next option? Like the Isle of Man route. So, uh, we've got our two sea tunnels, much larger crossings now, um, uh, and then the kind of the intermediate connections. So again, we're we're, we're not too far from Belfast, so we've got about 40 kilometers to connect up to Belfast. We've got two around 50 kilometer sea crossings to get over to the Isle of Man, so 54 kilometers on the Irish side and 48 kilometers on the British side, and then a 34 kilometer bit of railway connecting them on the Isle of Man. That'll be fun. Um, and then you've got uh, 68 kilometers of connecting railway through northern Cumbria. So another area that will be a laugh to from a, from an environmental perspective, getting getting that bit of railway through because, and I'll show you. I'm going to get the Google Earth up to show you sort of a rough idea of what the alignments look like when I was playing with them. But there's there's it's difficult to fit. You know these these are these are very rural areas and um, okay land is cheap and there aren't a lot of Chiltern Nimbies parked in them. But nonetheless, there are some pretty sensitive habitats you kind of want to not kibosh. So in total, you've got 102 kilometers. So you're getting some really long lengths of uh, sea crossing now. 102 kilometers of sea crossing length, uh, and then 145 kilometers of of, of new railway uh, to build there. So quite a lot going on. Um, horse drawn on the Isle of Man, of course, says Richard Smith. Yep, that's true. Uh, David Shepherd is asking whether it would make for sense for the Galloway route to join HS2 instead of the West Coast Main Line. Well, HS2 at this point doesn't go that far. So if there is a HS2 up there up that far, then absolutely it would connect into it. But HS2 only goes as far as Manchester on that side, or as far as um, as just north of Wigan uh, on the West Coast Main Line when it is finished. So until the connection right up to Scotland is confirmed, it would be connected to the West Coast Main Line. Uh, Dave Frankel is pointing out that it's a very long way around for any London to Ireland trains. Yeah, absolutely. This is this is still a very long. So despite the fact that these are shorter connections. These are not ideal for the centre population of Britain to to get getting kind of to and from. Um, so the next one is the Irish Mail route. Now this is a connection uh, going from uh, kind of making the most of the North Wales Main Line. Uh, you probably need to do upgrading from Bangor across. So so actually some new railway connecting from Bangor, probably a new crossing over the Menai Strait. Uh, a new bridge crossing uh, there, a bit like the Medway Viaduct, something like that. And then probably some of the more complicated construction would actually be the fact that you're, you land in Dublin and somehow have to get, you have to somehow get your um, get your alignment into the central Dublin and, and sensibly park trains, but also connect into the freight network. So that's tricky, um, but not much. So so there's nine kilometres because you basically land slap bang in the middle of Dublin. 97 kilometers of, of sea crossing other people have pointed out that the actual tunnels are going to be quite a lot longer than this absolutely yeah but in this i've basically quoted the minimums so i've gone for the straight line simply to say the absolute minimum length of the sea crossing is this the reality is that your tunnel is going to extend in some cases substantially further um and then you'd need about 43 kilometers of new railway to connect up to the the railway either either just uh, probably the other side of Bangor, actually. So, so you'd skip Bangor. Um, 
uh, you'd skip Bangor and then uh, the, the railway kind of would come off and, and, and weave on a new alignment, much probably broadly parallel than the existing one, but you'd, you'd want two dedicated tracks to, to for the approach to this. But that's not the end of the story because the whole point of this is that it's a connection to Northern Ireland, right? So that's that also requires a connection up to Belfast of about 152 kilometres. So this option does mean that you have a... Whilst you've got a sea crossing length of, of just under 100 kilometres, you also have the best part of, well, over 200 kilometres of land infrastructure. It's quite a lot of new railway. So, um, yes. So if you ignore... If, if you consider Ireland as one thing then this starts looking like quite a sensible option from a perspective of joining up the, the kind of the central, the centroids of population in the two islands. But from an engineering perspective, this one is much more challenging. 100 kilometres of tunnel under a pretty deep bit of sea, that's, a, that's certainly a challenging bit of engineering. Uh, although Ella does point out that it would integrate quite nicely with Enterprise. Yeah, that's true. Uh, <laughs> so the last route now is this is the Tusker route. Uh, Heading over to, to uh, from, well, basically you've got, so so you've got, um, yeah, an 82 kilometer sea crossing. You've got 101 kilometers of new railway to get over to, to um, Swansea because basically you need to rebuild the, you know, the, the railways uh, west of Swansea are rubbish. Actually, the connection between Cardiff and Swansea is also rubbish, but um, probably upgradable online uh, and it's two track and doable. Whereas everything, the other side of Swansea is pretty pants. So you'd need some fairly major upgrades to, to, to fit a new railway alignment. Um, but, uh, then you connect up to the, the sea crossing in whatever form it takes. But then the story doesn't end there because you've also then got to get all the way up to Belfast according to our we're going to Belfast rules, which means 310 kilometres of railway. So that's quite a bit of railway that you'd need to construct to get up to Belfast if you chose that route. Um. So you have 82 kilometres of sea crossing length, but you've got 411 kilometres of new railway required. That's a fairly substantial bit of extra railway um, construction required. So, uh, so there you go. So that's uh, obviously part part of the part of the landscape here, or part of the context, the engineering context, is that, as I said earlier, um, the Republic of Ireland are considering uh, a high speed railway network anyway, which I would fully expect to be built to 1435 mil gauge. So you would expect that this that this project would tie into that and would not you know be you wouldn't be expecting to bring the the cost of the the the, the on land railway connection certainly not in, in ireland uh of this scale as part of the project but to give an idea of, of overall sort of scale I, I thought i'd include it for now um for fun because this is rail matter and you know we can do what we like uh david shepherd reckons that the tusco route would be the most likely to get eu funding Barry Jones says another route that doesn't connect Great Britain to Northern Ireland. Uh, yeah, it does via the high speed railway going up through. Uh, as I say, I, I'm re like only moderately interested in directly connecting Northern Ireland uh, for political reasons. I'm more interested in connecting the two land masses uh, for human reasons. So this is definitely on the table as a consideration in my eyes. Uh, I just use Northern Ireland as a fixed link and as the episode title to pull people in. You know, bit of old marketing trickery there. Uh, Lots of people are saying so. All right, oh, bye, Matt. Cheer cheerio. Uh, who who have we lost? Who's gone? Uh, who's who's Eddie the Zen? What have I missed? Uh, what what people are saying? Uh, right. Anyway, Holden Cranes with a crazy stare. Why not build Tusker Irish Mail and Strand Ra routes? What do all of them? Well, this is it. <laughs> now you're talking my language. Uh, no, let's let's just consider one. So we, we've gone through the Kintyre route, the Galloway route, the Isle of Man route, the Irish Mail route, and the Tusker route. But which one is going to be the one that nabs it? Which is best? Um, I did a table. So what I did was I looked at the, the lengths and I uh, basically I've gone, right, I want to get from York to Belfast, which is which which is going to give me the quickest journey times to do that. And from York to Belfast with my fancy proposal. So this is including the normal railway time it gets me to get to Glasgow which is, um, about, what is it, three hours. Um, it's about five hours, 45 minutes then to get to Belfast, including the extra bits of railway. So uh, that's quite a long time, uh, but I suppose not too bad. You know, I'd, I'd happily do that journey uh, instead of flying, for example, you know, um, 
uh, by the time you've got to an airport, faffed around, flown across, you know, and, and also burped your kind of 20 years worth of carbon footprint. Uh, yeah, I'd happily get the train for that one. Uh, and my route cost is based on my normal sort of uh, pretty high uh, uh, kind of thumb in, uh, lick thumb sort of figures based around uh, what did I do? I did 200 million per single track kilometer for the sea crossing and I did uh, euros and I did um, what 60 million euros per single track kilometer for the so very expensive for the for the uh, on land railway to give me a, a rough finger in the air cost. But I dare say these are probably closer to the to the real figures than anything that's been quoted so far, because 15 billion ain't paying for anything. And I've seen that as quoted quite commonly for the, the Galloway uh, route. In any case, so, right, the Galloway route then takes me uh, four and a quarter hours, uh, four and three quarter hours, sorry. So that, for that's that's for 30, 31 billion. So so that's the cheapest by far is the Galloway option. However, that definitely excludes the explody stuff. That definitely excludes the amount of... Um, blowy uppy uh, nuclear wastey stuff going on in the in the Beaufort Dyke. What are people saying? So, Irish Craft Beer Show did Dublin to York in 2018. Left home at 5am, was in the Railway Museum at 10am for opening. That's, uh, what, flying or taking the ferry? That's, that's not bad going, actually. Um, oh, I see. Cheerio, yeah, Eurostar lover 009, yes. Um, how many ancient woodlands? Oh, God, no. Well, who knows? At least HS2 is worth. Yep, there we go. Standard. Um, the ticket price. <laughs> hey, ticket prices would be, uh, well, who knows? About as much as the ferry is, I'd imagine. Right, the Isle of Man route. Five and a quarter hours. So so pretty quick for me, you know, uh, going across, depending on what speed you get through. But So five and a quarter hours from York. 52 billion, though. So it's getting pretty pricey at this point. Um, the Irish mail route is 57 billion. And for me in York, that would take 7 hours and 15 minutes because it's quite slow to get over to, to Bangor. Bangor is quite slow to get to, and um, so that's why that's 7 hours 15 minutes. But actually, you know, it's maybe... Eh. The last one, the Tuscar route, is, you know, given the fact that you've got uh, quite a long bit of slow railway journey to get through South Wales, this is 9.5 hours for me from York. Uh, probably quicker from like you know London, but pretty slow going uh, from York, and the route cost as well because there's so much extra railway, particularly through Ireland. Of course, you're looking at seventy four billion. So in both cases, for the last two, the the cost is thrown massively by the length of the Irish Irish leg. If you exclude the high the, the kind of the the if you consider that the Irish uh, high speed rail network is being delivered separately, those options aren't necessarily that crazy, um, cost wise. But looking at those alone, you know, in terms of York to Belfast times and cost, you'd say that the Explody one uh, is, is the winner. You know, um, you'd say that the Explody one is the one that you go for. However, um, I still think that the best route by far is this one. I'm a massive fan of the Irish mail route. I think this makes the most sense from a socioeconomic, from a kind of a human perspective. It gives the chance for North Wales to kind of grow as a, as a, as a kind of to continue to urbanise as a place, you know, more, more new housing and, and kind of more development, which is, which is good. Uh, urbanisation is, is good for the environment. Uh, means people don't have to drive around as much. Uh, stuff doesn't have to move around as much. And there's less impact on habitats. So that's good. And it would also mean that... Uh, we would have an excuse. It would sort of undermine the isolationism that Britain's currently uh, obsessed about because our connection would be with the Republic of Ireland, not with Northern Ireland, and we would then have to uh, deal with the connections through the through the Republic to get up to Northern Ireland. So my preference is certainly for the Irish mail route, but if you're looking at a connection to... Um, if you're looking at the, the connection to Northern Ireland directly, then you're probably going to decide that the Galloway route is the better one. So the explodey one... Um, also, yes, definitely, an Irish link is technically feasible. I know I've not really gone into the technical details very much, but frankly, it's always possible. Stupidity and possibility uh, are not necessarily, uh, you know, they're not necessarily competing factors. Uh, something can be technically feasible. It can still be very, very stupid. And indeed, I wrote a piece about Boris's suggestion of building a new uh, road bridge connecting France and, uh, and Kent. Uh, and it was a very stupid idea. Of course, it's technically feasible, but that's not the point. Um, so, lots of discussions about all sorts of things. Uh, Matt Reed is asking if it was built. How much freight? I would think. I thought it would. I think it would use. 
uh, a lot. I'd expect it to operate. So if if we open this up, so let, let's go back and let's let's go back here. In fact, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna get uh, the Google Maps up because this is where I've been sketching what an align what the alignments might actually look like. Um, so here you have the so you can see here this is the what I'd have as my uh, connection heading over to the, the the tunnel and then going its way into 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 Dublin. Um, this is my preference of a route. What I'd, what you'd expect, or what I would expect, is that you would um, probably build a freight exchange terminal. Let's get rid of Valley. You know, we don't need Valley Airport. Well, uh, the, 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 get rid of that. Or uh, at least sort of occupy some of the scrubland next to it. Uh, and and you'd have a, a freight exchange terminal. You'd have a, a motor rail going from the A55 onto the railway as well. Um, essentially, you'd run it like the Channel Tunnel, where you'd have uh, the ability for lorries to actually go onto the railway you'd have uh, freight on the other side doing the same thing going off so that you'd not so you'd be driving even though you'd have road transport being able to use it you'd also be able to have container traffic traveling through it as well uh, what would also be a good idea then would be to make sure that you've got gauge clearance w12 gauge clearance so it's so a decent freight gauge clearance right the way through along the north wales main line which would tie nicely into the fact that it needs to be electrified so that would all be very nice um so but if you got to the Galloway route, you can see just how much railway you're having to build here. Like this is a okay, you can see it's a pretty straightforward, pretty simplified looking high speed alignment here. But it's a substantial amount of of disruption of an, of an area that doesn't have a railway connection. And the the trouble with this sort of infrastructure is that if you're building this as um as a connection for a high you know not necessarily high speed but high capacity and you know if it's an an international connector. You're not going to be building lots of intermediate stations, so the local area is not going to get the benefit from it. So this is why my preference for the for the um, the Irish Mail route, but my preference for the the kind of the Dublin connector is there because you're not you're not introducing that challenge necessarily. Uh, yes, there's a risk that you that you drive a bit more um, high speed route uh, uh, line uh, high speed services that push away some of the local services on the on the the Welsh the North Wales main line, but that would require firstly you'd have to resignal the whole thing anyway. But also I'd justify uh, expansion of capacity along that line in any case, including potential additional segregation along that route. And then essentially you'd tie it into, you'd connect it up with crew and that would be your high speed connector. You'd get high speed two up to crew and then from crew you would follow, you'd have a, a decent service connecting up to the to the new line. And, and indeed over time you could add additional high speed segregation as, as you saw fit. Plus also you'd have the high speed connection going up to, to uh, Belfast as well there. Um, what signaling system do I suggest? Well, I just I don't really care as long as it's ETCS level two, level three. It's fine. It's doing its job. Uh, just just have it ETCS ready. Uh, it's fine. I don't really have a preference on signal. We do need to get someone to come into rail matter and chat about ETCS and, and things, don't we? Um, you can see that. Uh, so this is a series of straights, by the way. This isn't just one long curve. It's broadly bro parallel in the existing railway. This is a mess. The, I, I'm not a fan of the Kintyre route at all. I just think it's a mess. It's a mess of an option. And again, you just, you just, yeah, it's just not, it's not a pretty uh, bit of rail. You know, it's just not a pretty idea. The Isle of Man. The challenge of the Isle of Man is that you'd come if you were going to connect on the on the flat and easy to build on side of the Isle of Man. You're also away from all the centre of population. So whilst there should be an intermediate state exchange station on on the Isle of Man, it would have to be. You know, I don't know. You'd connect it up. Uh, you'd have to construct some sort of parkway and then link it up with additional rail. I don't know. I don't know how you'd do that, but it, it wouldn't be pretty and it'd probably end up being primarily vehicle, you know, uh, private vehicles rather than a rail connection. And also, it's a bit of a messy connection up. I, I say my preference is for the Irish Mail connection. So, um, is a fixed link to Northern Ireland feasible? Yes. Is it a good idea? No, I don't think it is a good idea because I think the connection over to Dublin is a better one. But there we go. So that's 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 where I'm at, really. That's that's what I'm thinking. Uh, how big is, would a semaphore have to be for 360 kilometer an hour operation, says Jack Elliott. Well, very good question. Um, <laughs> yes, uh, there might be giants. Uh, Isle of Man route is probably out for political reasons. Can't imagine the locals would want a fire hose of rail passengers pointed at them. Indeed. Um, that was that, everyone. Let's bring my face back uh, very briefly. While I say hello, drink a bit more beer, and, and answer any further questions. Oh, that was all right. What? How are we doing? Okay, we've smashed time a little bit. It's four minutes. It's five minutes past the hour. But um, I think we're doing all right. That was um, that was fun. I enjoyed that. Uh, 
any further questions that, that I hope for, perhaps didn't include the uh, level of technical engineering detail that you hope for but you know I always like to get a bit more fun and political with these things um, yes a lot of loss of rail width uh, on lots of parts of the, 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 the route my preference of course would be to you know nick a couple of lanes back off the A55 in a few places but that might not be uh, hugely popular probably additional kind of shortcut tunnels along the railway might be uh, not a bad way to do it um ian davis is saying uh, oh yeah ian yeah of course you can just d direct message me on discord and i'll give you a fancy red name that's not a problem um uh let's see let me just uh get rid of that um what beer am i drinking this is beavertown neck oil and the next beer that I was potentially going to drink is one of my favourites, which is Dead Pony Club, which is a lovely session pale. Very nice. Um, there we are. There's the two of those. They're very lovely beers. Uh, very nice indeed, Graham. Th Graham Howarth, thank you for asking. Very nice, yeah. Um, Ellie, the developer, is asking about uh, interlaced and dual gauge track in the routes in Ireland. Well, you could do that. Um, you could have dual gauge for, the, for where you're using the existing railway network, but my preference would be to construct an interoperable high-speed network in on the island of Ireland anyway, because I think that it's not a bad idea to do it. The, the existing railway network isn't great, and it means that you can procure off-the-shelf rolling stock, essentially, if you do that. Um, wouldn't the geography in Scotland pose a problem? Absolutely it would. Yeah, Dumfries and Galloway is a mixture of pretty and hilly, so it'd be a real challenge. Um, Irish Craft Beer Show. Would there be any benefit to upgrading the North Wales line and retaining the ferry? It takes two-plus hours to get to crew right now, after waiting an hour for the train, yeah, it's not ideal, really. Um, how would an extension? How could an extension to NPR across North Wales link up to Holyhead, as is, and a tunnel? Well, this is sort of what I was talking about: is the fact that um, it wouldn't necessarily be an extension to NPR, but you might have a. There might be a justification for building a, a high-speed connection from. Let's go. Let's go. Let's get the let's get the map up actually to explain this. So. Um, actually, let's be even snazzier. Let's go in here and just get up. Let's put the existing railway network on to make our lives a bit easier. Yep. And also, let's just get... Uh, nope, don't do that. I want to do... Sorry, my Google Earth is going a bit slowly. Let's get high speed one, high speed two, high speed that, and Northern Pass rail up. There we go. So, um, you can see some of the things going on here. Uh, so if we've got our connection over here's our nice line over here you've got the existing railway network down here uh, this is crew over here. oh you can't see it that's that's i need to do this uh in fact do this there we are i'm back right so thankfully you didn't see any of that so that's good so you can see i've added the existing railway network here in in thin white uh, we've got the uh, we've got high speed two coming up here. There's high speed two doing its thing, uh, and you've got Northern Powerhouse Rail here over the top coming into Liverpool. Um, so you could indeed uh, sort of build the connection across, sort of tunnel. So it'll be a tunnel station anyway. But my feet, it's probably going to be a terminal tunnel station. You could connect it through. Um, that could be one way to do it. But also the connection through to crew will be pretty good. So actually what you could do is have the high speed connection coming up through crew uh, and, and following the North Wales main line that way. And that, that could be the, the way to do it. Um, that might be a sensible way to, to, to do it. I'm doing big face. Thank you, David Shepard. Yes, I was doing big face. So, um, yeah, there are, there are a few options available there. Um, uh, yeah, so, so anyway, that's uh, for those of you who haven't seen sort of what Northern Powerhouse Rail might look like. There's a... There's a there's your hint. It's, uh, that's now public, everyone. Sorry to uh, everyone in Transport for the North who, uh, you know, didn't think it was supposed to be. <laughs> it's my own alignment. It's on Twitter anyway. You've all seen it. It's fine. It's just a, a well-guessed route alignment. Anyway, right, let's go back to Big Face. So, <laughs> oh, oh, let's let's close things off because it's we're getting to the time where, where I, I, I ought to. Um, oh, golly. I'm, there we go. I'm just breaking my tech. Oh, breathe. So, can you send me the KMZ for the Irish Rail ideas? Ella, the developer, yes, I can. Uh, yeah, also, there's the, for the Patreon people, there is the map with all the railway ideas. I should probably start dumping more stuff on there because we haven't really been using it. We need to do that. Um, we'll make There'll probably be a Rail Matter channel with it, and we'll pin it at the top. That's probably a good idea. Ella, remind me to do that. I'm causing chaos. Things are happening. It's madness. What I'm going to do is press this, make my face disappear, actually, because you don't need to see it. Oh, as ever, thanks everyone for, for watching. It's been a pleasure.
There are 120 of you watching. That's nice, isn't it? Um, we're available on all good podcasting platforms now. We're available on so many podcasting platforms that I can't name them all. Uh, although they are on screen, I think, um, looking colourful. Uh, so th for everyone who's watched in audio only, uh, I can only apologise. Uh, and will continue to do so every single time. Uh, we've mentioned the Discord already. Do come and join us on the Discord. It's good grief. It's just chaos in there. I have no idea what's going on. Uh, there are about 250 million people on there now. Uh, it's all very exciting. Lots of fun discussion about railways and general. It's a happy place to be. Uh, GarethDennis.co.uk slash Discord is where to go for that. Patreon is where to support me to make more of this happen or indeed to tell me to do better. Uh, Patreon.com slash GarethDennis. You know the drill. Uh, particularly on guests. If you've got guest suggestions, please send them my way because... Um, Partly because I, I I have to fill episodes as one a week, but also because there are so many fun people out there that's almost a bit overwhelming. I don't know who to ask first. So um, there are lots of suggestions on the on the Discord uh, for Patreon people. So please get involved that way. Um, you don't have to Patreon. You can like it starts with like a euro uh, a month. So it's not it's not a backbreaker. Not that I'm saying you should, but if you want to get involved in voting, you really don't have to pay much and you can then you get all the same rights, the voting rights as the mad people who pay a lot more. Um, and also, if you want to just throw cash at me like a lunatic, uh, I would not recommend doing that, but you can go to paypal.me slash Gareth Dennis, but that's, uh, let's, let's rapidly whiz over that one. Next week! Next week, it's episode 34 and we have John Stone joining us. Independent journalist John Stone, uh, European correspondent now, policy special, uh, kind of policy journalist. What, what is his new role, actually? I can't remember. He changed job. Anyway, he's absolutely fantastic on policy. He's a massive nerd. He loves railways. And he's going to talk to us about, um, it's going to give us an interesting little perspective on Europe's railways. It's going to be fantastic. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a really good one. Um, uh, we're going to sort this out over the next few days, actually. Um, and it's going to be, it's going to be fun. Episode 34, John Stone, a correspondence guide to Europe's railways. It's going to be fun. Um, it only really remains for me to say uh, oh, two things. One, I've not updated the uh, the Patreon supporter list on the credits, which is bad form. I will have next week. Uh, apologies, everyone. But also, uh, there is always a weird Hyperloop person who does that every week. Yeah, that's true. Um, uh, yeah, there's, there's, it's it's the Pedro guy. He's a, a nasty piece of work. Uh, I need to block him off the chat because he's uh, his Twitter is an absolute shambles. He's a, a bigot, so it's probably best to just get him kicked off the chat. I'll work on that later. Don't worry about it. In any case, um, yeah, so that's the one dislike probably. Um, this has been a fun one. I've enjoyed this. Uh, we, I, my geography of Ireland is embarrassingly poor, uh, so Irish Craft Beer Show and others, thanks for setting me straight. Um, uh, I have had a lot of fun. And we are going to see each other on the next one. For all the people who've joined in the chat, you're brilliant. Uh, why not make Irish Fixed Link Hyperloop Ella on that bombshell? <laughs> all that remains for me to do is say cheerio. Thanks, everyone. Cheers and good night. Cheerio.